How's it going, guys? Did you miss me? I know I've been gone for a while, but guys, I am in the midst of a move. I am in the midst of, um, you know, work, uh, a lot of things going on at work, you know, a lot of things not going on at work. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here now though, guys. So don't worry. Don't worry. I didn't leave you. I didn't leave you. A good soldier never leaves a man behind. All right, here it is. Um, real quick. Uh, yeah, I'm the guy that wears the Pocahontas shirt to a Lion King review. Uh, spoiler, this is a Lion King review. We're going to be talking about 1994's Disney's animation, The Lion King. Uh, the magnum opus of Disney animation, at least in the 2D realm, and even past that, I would say. With the new live action coming out, which I am... Um, I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna see it, but I'm a little so-so on it. I, I'm just getting a little burnout on the live actions. Really like Cinderella. Really like Jungle Book. Um, from then on, you know, I they falter for me. Beauty and the Beast. Eh, okay, Aladdin. Not bad. I, I didn't mind. I haven't seen Dumbo. Heard mixed things. Lion King doesn't have great reviews. So I'm gonna go into it with low expectations and just hope for the best. And. Some of the voice characters, not too, you know, uh, Jeremy Irons a Scar. That that was perfect. Why is he not Scar? Maybe he don't want to be Scar. I don't know. Um, I think a good choice was Seth Rogen, though, for Pumbaa. That just makes sense. Anyways, we're not going to be talking about the live action. We're talking about the animated feature. I believe this was the 32nd um, or 34th. Gosh, guys, don't shoot me. Lion King is just an epic animated movie, and it crosses over from just Disney entertainment to entertainment in general. You know what I'm saying? Um, this really was the peak of Disney, I would say. I don't think they ever topped themselves after this, but how could they? Um, the voice acting, the, um, the animation, the soundtrack, the score... It does not get better than this. Maybe some people some people said Beauty and the Beast was maybe the technically better film, and it was nominated for awards, but I would say this is the highlight right here. I, I would say, personally for me, this beats it out. This was the peak. I don't really need to go in details on this movie. Most of you have seen it. Uh, if you haven't seen it, then I would go see it right away, of course, since the new one's coming out. Uh, but basically, it's... um. It's Simba and his father Mufasa, and uh, Simba is supposed to be taken in the footsteps of his father. And, um, well, we, we don't want to talk about that one scene. We all know that one scene. Uh, if you want to see me cry like a little girl, I can talk about it. But you don't want to see me cry like a little girl, so we're not going to talk about it. Ixnay on that. Akuna Matata, as they say. But, guys, overall, it's just a story of a young lion... Not really sure about what he should do anymore after the event of his father happened, after the death of his father. He, he, he doesn't think he should go back. He thinks, you know, the death of his father was on his hands. That, that was his fault. So he stays out with, you know, Timon and Pumbaa. And eventually he becomes the king that everybody knows he can be. So it's really a redemption story in some ways. Let, let's talk about the soundtrack. Maybe the greatest Disney soundtrack of all time. Um, Circle of Life, uh, Can You Feel the Love Tonight, Just Can't Wait to Be King, Be Prepared. Guys, don't be worried. I just want to cut in here for one second. Can we talk about how uh, Can You Feel the Love Tonight was originally cut by Jeffrey Katzenberg? Um, what was Katzenberg thinking back in the day? Um, yeah, Can You Feel the Love Tonight? This was also the man that cut a part of your world from Little Mermaid. And Can You Feel the Love went on to win the Academy Award. So... But that was the cool thing about Disney back in the day. There was a lot of beef, a lot of tension behind the scenes of Disney between Roy, Michael Eisner, and Jeffrey Katzenberg. Um, so yeah, that was kind of cool. Anyways, I just wanted to add that in there because what was he thinking? It doesn't get better as far as soundtracks go for Disney movies. It really doesn't. Um, there are good ones like Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin. Um, actually, Aladdin's... Ooh, I, I don't want to get hate mail. Aladdin's okay, but... The Renaissance era for Disney, 
it, it was a time for Disney like no other. And I don't know if it'll ever be matched again. They came out of their dark place in the, the early to mid-80s, and they started making hit after hit. And this was the magnum opus, like I said before. It, this this movie is seen by, you know, kids today, and it's going to keep being seen. And live action's getting pumped out for it. But, and there was a sequel. And actually, it was a straight to VHS sequel, but it really wasn't that bad. It was actually pretty good. Uh, I rewatched it. I rewatched both of these the other night, and of course the first one is better. But a lot of the voice cast comes back for the second one, and it has some good songs in it. Uh, we, we know. Um, he lives in you. He, uh, him, they, uh, he lives in me. Now that was embarrassing. That that was embarrassing. I didn't need to do that. So, as far as Disney movie goes, great animation, great villain, great story, great score, great soundtrack. Those <laughs> are some of the five elements to a key Disney movie. And this this one pulls on the heartstrings, guys. This one pulls on the heartstrings in multiple instances. And um, some depressing parts happen in it. But it really evolves the story of it. It really makes it more of a serious tone story than... You know, some of the previous Disney movies, shall I say. Not that those weren't, but, you know, this one is, like I said, it crossed over from Disney animation entertainment to, you know, mainstream global entertainment. And you see Disney today, they are glo they are almost a monopoly, you know, as much as I hate to say it. I, um, I don't agree with everything Disney does. I, I am much more into the old school feel of Disney. Um, I do love Disney World and the parks, but they've, you know, they're kind of getting a little too big for their boots in some instances, but in some instances they're not. So, um, they did butcher Star Wars, but they're doing great with Marvel. So I don't know. I still love Disney. Um, Walt's a huge inspiration for me. Anybody that knows me knows all this anyway. So guys, I would probably give this, honestly, I'd probably give this a nine and a half out of 10. I would. And as far as Disney movie goes, I give it a 10 out of 10. It's a great Disney movie. Um, possibly, it's in my top three. I I struggle with Toy Story, this, and Pocahontas, believe it or not. I know, I know, maybe I'll do a review on that movie so you won't think I'm absolutely insane. But I know it has a good following. I do know that. Guys, if you haven't seen it, go see it now. And if you have seen it, um, go see it again. I don't know. Why wouldn't you go? This is a great movie. Um, I hope you enjoyed this review, which was really more of like a rambling than anything. And uh, most importantly, though, go catch a flick.